I'm sure a few of you would have had the question, why do we minimize the sum of squared error and not directly the sum of errors? So that's a reasonable doubt to have. Why don't we directly minimize the sum of errors? Why do we square it and then minimize it? So in this video, we will try to answer this question as to why do we minimize the sum of squared errors and not any other error. So this is a small example to illustrate that. So let us have three points A, B and C. And this is the line that we get if we run a linear regression with these three points, with these coordinates, then this is the line that we would get. So let us find the errors for all the three points. So we can see for A, so let me write down the actual values. Let me write down the predicted values and then we will calculate the errors. So for point A, the actual value is 5, the y coordinate is 5. The predicted value is also 5, so the line passes through the line and hence the predicted value is also 5, so my error is 0. So the error is 0 because it passes through the line. Similarly for point B, my dependent variable is 5, so this is my actual value. What is my predicted value corresponding to this 5? So corresponding to the x coordinate 5, if you see, my dependent variable has a value 7.5. So let me write down 7.5 here. So what is my error? Actual minus predicted, it will give me minus 2.5. And similarly for point C, my dependent variable has a value 10. So the actual value is 10. And the predicted value for this point would be the point on the line with the same x-axis as here, which is 7.5 again. So we'll have 7.5 here. So once again, the error here is 2.5 actual minus predicted. Now we were trying to answer the question, why do we minimize sum of squared error and not directly the sum of error? So let us calculate the sum of error in this case. So sum of error would be E1 plus E2 plus E3. And what do we get? we get 0. So we get the total error as 0. Does that mean that this line is making 0 error? No. We can clearly see that the errors, some of the errors are negative. So one error in particular here is negative in sign and the other error is positive in sign and they are equal. So the line passes right through the middle of the points and we have a negative error and we have an equal amount of positive error. So if we take the sum of errors, it gives us 0. But definitely the line is not making zero error. It has, it is making some amount of error. So this is why we don't minimize directly the sum of errors. We first square it so that we get rid of the sign and then we try to minimize the square of the errors and not directly the errors. Now a few of you would still have the question that why do we take the square? Why not take the mod of it and then minimize? So you might have the question, let's say, why don't we minimize E1 mod plus E2 mod plus E3 mod. So why don't we minimize this quantity? So the answer to that is, if we minimize this quantity, we might get multiple solutions. We might get multiple solutions if we minimize this quantity. So if we minimize this, we might get two equations as our answer. We might have two equations giving the same value of sum of absolute errors. So in that case, we will always be confused which one to select as both of the lines will have the same amount of sum of mod errors. But if you minimize using sum of squared error, it will always give you one particular line as the solution. So one example to illustrate this is, let us take two lines here. So one line passing through this point and the other line passing through here. So this is line number one and this is line number two. Now if you calculate the total sum of mod errors for these two lines, so E1 it is 0, E2 is 2.5, this is also 2, no sorry, this is 0, this is 0. For E2 it is also 0 and for E3 it is, we can see it is 5 here. So the total error is 5 for line 1. For line 2, let us calculate the same quantity. 
So for E1 it is again 0, it passes through this. For E2 it is 5 now. So I have taken a mod, so it doesn't matter. And for E3 it is 0 now. So it gives me again the same number. So you can see if we take the sum of mod of the errors, we are getting two lines with the same value of error. So both these lines 1 and 2 have the same amount of error. So which one do we select? So there remains a confusion if we use the sum of mod errors. But if we minimize the sum of squared errors, which is what we learned in the previous video and which is what the ordinary least square does, we will always get one single line. We will always get one line as the answer and hence it removes all the confusion. So in this case, let us calculate the sum of squared errors. So I will square each of the errors and add them up. So E1 is 0, E2 is 2.5 and E3 is also 2.5. So it doesn't matter. We will remove the negative sign because on squaring it anyways goes away. So we will get 6.25 plus 6.25 so 12.50 so this is the total amount of sum of squared error that the green line is making so note this is for the green line so that is why we use the sum of squared errors and not any other error parameter in ordinary least square or in in a linear regression algorithm